Hi, I'm Joe Saunders of Miniature Landscape Hobbies, and in this episode, we're going to solve the age-old problem of discovering what the best shader and lining product is. We're going to take a look at oils, panel liners, and inks. When it's all done, we'll be able to tell which is the fastest and which is the best. I hope. A few videos back, I decided it was time to try my hand at shading models with oils. During the video, I used a tube of Abtilung 502 smoke oil paint and I shaded and lined in a large number of Napoleonic models. I did this primarily through the use of targeted washes. After it was all said and done, I thought the results were decent. However, I noticed that the definition just was not quite sharp enough, and I felt the model suffered a little bit while trying to establish contrast. Shortly after this, I duplicated my results using black oil paint. I didn't feature this in a video, but let me conclude that I was happy with the result. In fact, I was so happy, I went on to do a character model with the oils and I thought the result made it probably one of the best models I've ever done. So now I've added oil paint washes to my stable of techniques, and they fall in line beside my trusty inks and enamels. The whole time I was applying the oils, I decided that the process was very fast. I think I actually said blazingly fast in my video. This process was blazingly fast. Okay, yes I did. So, based on this, I was getting ready to make a major switch in my techniques by using oils almost exclusively for shading. I figured that my enamel panel liners and black ink would gradually find their way to the back of my storage cabinet, where they would eventually dry out. But then I realized that I really had no baseline to make the jump to oils alone. I've been using enamel panel liners and acrylic inks for years and have a lot of confidence in them. So it seems sensible to make a somewhat organized comparison as opposed to just turning my back on them. Thinking this over, I decided I should compare the speed and effectiveness of these products to get a fair look at the differences between them. I had three of the cool new 1-100 scale Sherman Jumbos for Flames of War all ready to go, so these would make a good subject. Evaluating the time it takes to shade these is pretty easy. I would just paint each of them with a different enamel, ink, or oil and time how long it took. Judging the effectiveness of the visual qualities of these products, though, is really hopelessly subjective. So I decided to take a poll on Facebook and Instagram. I would use weight of numbers to count up the votes for everyone's preferred result to help me declare a winner. But here is where I feel I need to make some caveats. First, you'll notice that I've not mentioned old-fashioned shading washes, particularly the acrylic kinds. This is due to the fact that I don't really consider them full shaders. Why? Well, though I love some of these washes, especially Army Painter's range of shaders, I find that they never concentrate enough to replace the need to go in with a lining product of some kind. Don't get me wrong, though, these products do have their place, but I find they excel at working more like a filter, smoothing out the gradients between layers of color. Lastly, I have a statement about the efficacy of this experiment. 
Before I became a full-time commissioned terrain builder and content creator, I worked as a digital marketing consultant, and I have a background in social psychology. Because of this, I'm familiar with methods for correct study design and analysis. In this video, my friends, ain't that. But you work with what you've got, though, right? The results that we get here should still be interesting. So let's get down to the experiment. If you like my videos, please consider leaving a tip with super thanks. After preparing three Sherman Jumbo models by doing the base colors and highlights, I gave each a coat of satin varnish to protect my work and aid the capillary action. Then I was ready to start the experiment. I began with enamels. For this product, there's no real preparation. If you use the Tamiya brand, the brush is even integrated right into the jar. I started the timer, shook it up, and then went to work. Enamels work by more or less dabbing the product on the model, and then the capillary action draws the paint to where you need it. At around the seven minute mark, I switched to a brush dampened with mineral spirits and cleaned any errors or title marks that I had made previously. When this was done, and at about the 10 minute 49 second mark, I wrapped up. Here I stopped the timer. Now it's the ink's turn. I started the timer, shook up the ink, added a little airbrush flow improver to it, and I was off and running. Ink is different in that the capillary action is not as pronounced. It only goes where you brush it. This makes inks very precise, if a bit harsh. Why harsh? Well, it doesn't really feather itself out as it flows, like products with thinner in it. It accumulates exactly where you put it. I figured this would make ink the slowest of the applications. However, it doesn't need cleanup, and if you're accurate, it can go down fairly neatly. So in the end, the process took 9 minutes 30 seconds. I was surprised at this, but it was actually 1 minute and 19 seconds faster than the enamel. Now I moved on to oil paint. I started the timer, placed some black oil paint in a cup, and transferred some thinner to it until I like how it flowed. It's worth noting here that where it took just seconds to prepare the enamels and inks, it took 1 minute 30 seconds to prepare the oil paint. The rest of the process was just like the enamels. Dab it in place and let capillary action go to work. Then go back with a brush or sponge dampened with thinner and clean up any spots. And after it was done, it took 9 minutes and 22 seconds. So comparing the results, enamel took 10 minutes 49 seconds, ink took 9 minutes 30 seconds, and oil paints took 9 minutes and 22 seconds. Considering that it took a minute 30 to mix the oil, that meant the actual painting time was just under 8 minutes. Here we have to remember that the other preparations were so quick they would only subtract seconds from the result. Oil paints for shading, then, really are blazingly fast, though preparation times might make the difference kind of minor. Unless you have large batches of models to do, and then, in that case, I think the oils would really pay off. So now it comes down to the final effects. As I said before, I put this up for a vote on my Instagram and on a few Facebook groups that I frequent. I posted images of the three tanks without mentioning how each was shaded, and there I asked people to vote on the one they thought was the best. A got 32% of the votes, B got 20%, and C got 48%.
Now you're probably wondering which is which. A was the ink, B was the oil paint, and C was the enamel. So, the result? Well, enamel was slowest, but it proved the favored result overall. Oil was fastest, but was favored the least. Ink came in in the middle. I had higher hopes for oils, but oh well. Something to notice, though, was that the appearances were all close, and once I finished the weathering, the tanks, well, I really couldn't tell them apart. So, in the end, I've confirmed the old adage that you need the right tool for the job. Enamels will remain a go-to for the majority of my work. However, on occasion, when I need a very sharp line, the inks will be a good option. Lastly, if speed is of the essence, or I'm being faced with a huge batch paint, the oils will be up to bat. As a result, my inks and enamels will not get pushed back to the paint cabinet anytime soon. Instead, it's more likely that the inks, enamels, and oils will live side by side, being used if and when each is appropriate, and I imagine it'll be this way for some time. Thanks for everybody who participated in the poll. I really appreciated that you took the time to help out. Keep your eyes peeled for my next scientific study. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is your source for miniature, terrain building, and diorama content. And we can't do it without your support. We want to build a community to ensure that the wonderful art of building a miniature is accessible to everybody. To participate, please consider joining on Patreon. For $4 a month, our Patreon members benefit from 10% off at Joe Saunders Terrain in the Etsy store, 5% off paints and hobby supplies at Torchlight Games, free access to STL files, a mention in our credits, and early access to our videos. Please check it out and consider joining. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Please remember to subscribe, press the bell button so you get immediate notification on our videos, and until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature.